Approximately 800,000 people go missing every year, 2,300 children a day. Now, what does this have to do with cybersecurity? In this week's episode, I'm going to show you and tell you all about Trace Labs, the grassroots organization that's 15,000 people strong that crowdsources open source intelligence to assist law enforcement in finding missing persons. It's an amazing organization and we're gonna be talking with Robert Sell, the founder of it, and really revealing to you what Trace Labs is all about. Coming up. Hey everybody, so at continuing the open source intelligence theme of the month of June, we are looking at Trace Labs. So you may have remembered last week we built the Trace Labs VM on a Raspberry Pi uh, with a, a great tool set. You could check that video out if you're interested. But I wanted to really showcase the Trace Labs organization because I find what their mission is is unbelievably important and a great community service. We're going to be talking to this guy, Robert Sell, founder of Trace Labs. Now, if you're new here, this is Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further faster. And sometimes we do labs like we did last week building that VM. And sometimes we interview experts in the industry like Robert today. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button, thumbs up if you're finding value from the video. And we push videos out every Monday at noon. So getting back to Trace Labs. So this organization is 15,000 people strong. It started only three years ago, which I find unbelievable. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, that's a great mission, but how do you hook into law enforcement? I mean, you can't just be like a vigilante and you know do whatever you want and then you know throw it over to law enforcement and hope that they find some use or value of it. No. So Trace Labs started out as um, an organization trying to help law enforcement. And over the years, they have developed such a great reputation in the industry, especially in law enforcement, to the point now where law enforcement from across the world, all sorts of different law enforcement agencies, uh, will reach out to Trace Labs to help them either with a very urgent case, like something that we need to find this person right away, or um, just tough cases, we can't find it. So Trace Labs is entirely online. There is uh, Capture the Flag events, they have a Slack channel, they have a Trello board for you know ongoing operations and stuff like this. But what is Trace Labs all about? Developed into this huge multi-country community of over 15,000 people that now works with law enforcement agencies around the world and helps to not only help find missing persons, but also to raise awareness of the problem, because historically that's that's also been an issue, just to let people know how how bad it is and, and how much of an impact it has on families. So it, it's really evolved over the years. Uh, we've been in business for, I say in business, but like we've existed for about uh, three years now. And uh, every year it's been growing and growing and growing. So really amazing. So law enforcement can't scale, right? They don't have 15,000 people looking for missing persons at a particular department, right? Which is really one of the, the great value propositions of Trace Labs. Not only do you feel great about helping uh, reunite families with missing persons, but you're also kind of doing a community service by helping law enforcement uh, with a particular skill set that not you know every law enforcement agency is going to have access to. But how did Trace Labs really gain that trust of law enforcement? Questions. So first one, why can't law enforcement do that? Do this themselves? And really, it's a matter of scale. It's we have over 15,000 members in our Slack channel. And so law enforcement for any particular, any given law enforcement agency does not have that sort of manpower. And that's really what our value statement is, is to be able to scale up an operation from zero to 15,000. I mean, our CTFs are 650 people, so not 15,000, but, but still 650 people is huge. Uh, and you have that many people in a concentrated amount of time looking for particular subjects. You can generate a huge amount of information in that time and every single one of those reports is is useful and has I, I haven't seen a single report that I didn't read that where I was amazed at what we found and, and it contained very good actionable intelligence. So so that's what we provide and that's why they can't do it themselves. The second part of that question around how we operate and how we gained trust with law enforcement 
in the early days, nobody wanted to talk to us. And, and, and that was expected. A law enforcement would look at an entity like ours and think, wait a minute, you're bringing in hundreds of hackers to go look for people? Nope, that does not sound attractive at all uh, to law enforcement. So you can imagine how difficult it was to build that bridge where we actually got to the point where we are today, where we actually now have law enforcement from around the world emailing us and calling us, asking us to work on their cases. And, and that's night and day difference from where we started. So the relationship building that we had to go through to get to where we are today was very, very careful and working with our community to make sure that we never went over the line. There are a lot of groups out there that, that go over the line in my, in my consideration. Uh, and, and we can't afford to do that if we want to exist and continue to add value. So it was really a matter of a couple things. One was, if we want to do this, which we do, we want to improve the lives of those people that are missing and the friends and family of those missing people, and then also add value to law enforcement, but also revolutionize the way this is done, not only in North America, but around the world. So we definitely want the mission to succeed. Our community wants the mission to succeed. So that basic understanding, I think, was very quickly grasped by our community. So then we said, okay, if that's true, then what do we need to do to make that happen? And it was by putting some limits around the scope of our activity. So we are zero touch recon. We are passive reconnaissance only. Many people want to go further. Many people in our industry have the skill set to be able to go further. We just can't. And that's in some ways perhaps unfortunate, but that's the reality of being able to work with law enforcement and always remaining on the right side of the law and never interfering with an ongoing investigation. And, and that's critical to our existence. So uh, I have to give huge kudos to our, again, to our community for for allowing us to stay within those bounds and, and doing the work that we do. Trace Labs has done such a wonderful job that really their biggest struggle is the ability to support the demand that the law enforcement community is now trying to you know, put upon them or ask them for assistance. And while there is tons of capture the flags and ongoing operations, as I mentioned in the intro, there's 800,000 people a year that go missing. Um, and that's just, that's just way too much uh, for any one organization to really assist. Now, one of the interesting things that Robert told me was, you know, missing people, you know, you often think of just like a kidnapped child or maybe um, a kidnapped woman or whatever, but there really is a different uh, strata of type of missing persons. Robert mentioned two different cases that were quite notable and kind of give you a picture on some of these. Uh, in Australia, we were there in a live event working hand shoulder to shoulder with the AFP, with law enforcement. And as results come, came in, we would actually give to them directly and they could then dispatch police out into the field pretty much immediately. So that was one example that is in my mind. In that case, there was a license plate of the subject where we saw the subject actually going into a vehicle on video captured from CCTV that was open source intelligence that we provided to them that allowed them to immediately go out and, uh, and find that vehicle and find those people. So that was one. Uh, there's there's so many. There was another one. One of my particular favorites was a gentleman had uh, reinvented his life in order to avoid uh, child support payments. And that person, we often talk about username reuse. We talk about password reuse. This person had used picture reuse, used the same picture from his old life to create his new life online. And that was quickly discovered. So those are two that jump out at me. We have dozens more where we've got that kind of feedback from law enforcement on what works and what doesn't and uh, what they really appreciate. So I really feel like having those principles, those guiding principles that's passive recon only and that you don't actively do anything you shouldn't um, really sets the tone and really the, the tenant for what Trace Labs is all about, doing good for good purposes. Now, if you want to get involved, Trace Labs is very inclusive. 
you can join their Slack channel. It's very open. You can get right on there. You can start seeing like what's going on. If you want to invest, uh, contribute or look at ongoing investigations, they have a Trello board for each individual that they are currently searching for. You can see I've redacted some of the information here. Uh, if, you, if you want, you can go there. You could also learn from people who are a bit more experienced in the OSINT community while on the Slack channel. It's, it's very helpful. So if you're you know, a noob, uh, new to the industry, new, you didn't even know what OSINT was, don't feel intimidated. Don't feel that you can't A, learn something and B, um, you know, contribute even at a, a, at a junior level because every little bit helps. Yeah, I think the Slack channel is amazing. I would highly recommend anybody who has any interest you can follow our social media. So our Twitter channel, uh, Trace Labs on Twitter is a good way to see upcoming events, but to actually get engaged and to join the community, Slack is your best bet. And you can go to Twitter to get the, the, uh, the invite link there and go into there and take a look. There's people there that will answer your questions. There's community there that will support you, point you in the right direction, tell you what books to read, what podcasts to listen to, uh, who to talk to on any given subject, uh, and then help you as you mature your OSINT and move through uh, and get better and better, and then finally, you know, join one of our events. So, uh, yeah, I can't under, I can't emphasize that enough. I think it's a great resource for anybody interested in OSINT or helping missing persons. So I absolutely loved the Trace Labs group. I will be um, checking out the next Capture the Flag event that they have. The current one that's next week in June is actually already sold out, so you can't get on there. I did talk to Robert about kind of like a spectator type uh, element to the event. And while he thought that was interesting, he brought up some good points that like a lot of these op uh, these people were searching for, you know, you don't want to publicize it. Uh, the techniques people are using, they don't want to uh, necessarily reveal. So. You know, it, it's, it's, it doesn't lend itself to that um, kind of audience uh, for the event, unfortunately. But I do encourage you to get on the Slack channel, get involved, and potentially uh, join the next Capture the Flag event and have some fun and do some good. Okay? Thank you very much to Trace Labs, to Robert, um, to the whole staff over there. You guys are doing fantastic work. And, you know, I genuinely appreciate all that you're doing. Until next time, stay secure.